Do you treat all your slaves equally? Yes, of course. I treat my slaves equally. I feel like just because they are slaves or because some are healthier than others don't mean I should treat them all differently. I don't have a favor. I just want them to do the work and then it's all good. There's no problems. Can you tell me a time when your slaves did not do what you wanted them to do for you? Hmm. Well, there were very few of those times. But let me start off by saying that I respect all my slaves once again. And all my slaves respect me. So we do not get into trouble. But I can't remember just one time when it was snowing real hard. I told one of my slaves named James to go feed the j Oh, excuse me. The cast. <clears throat> Cold. Yellow fever. But he didn't listen to me. He just decided not to go feed them. I didn't realize he didn't do what I told him until I went outside for myself. And I saw the food there, still in the cabin. I asked James why he didn't feed them. And he told me that he had a cold and if he were to, when, if he went outside, I would not, it would only get worse. I understood where he was coming from though. From both, I told him next time, tell me so I can find someone else to do it. Because if he does it, then the slaves won't live no longer. And I take care and good care of them, and I love them. Aw. Do you sell your slaves when summer ended because there was not that much work for them to do? <laughs> of course. Why do I need so many slaves if there's no work for them anyways? When fall enters, I sold half my slaves. The other half, I would stay and work through this last possible chance to grow crops at this year. Then after the mid-November, I would sell another half of my slaves I kept and keep only a few. Because then again, it is business and they are expensive. I understand you are also a farmer. Do you enjoy doing farm work? Do you find it, find it something you might call a hobby? <clears throat> yes, I am a farmer. I am a farmer and I love it with a passion. I live to farm. I was born and raised in Flatlands, Long Island by a family who cherished the work of farming. Since my parents were farmers, I grew up in an environment that required me to assist in farm works. When my father passed away, man oh man, he left me acres of land which I now plant corn, beans, and other varieties of crops in his name. Have your slaves ever attempted to escape to, or have escaped before? If so, how did you handle the situation? Yes, my slave has run away before. When I have, met, when I have a missing slave, I go to town and post them on papers. On May 14th, 1815, I believe, my Negro did run away. I went to town, I posted them, a slave was running away, and I was offering $80 for his return. During the season of the summer, how often do you check on your farm? How often? During the summer? Yeah, yeah, actually, I check on it often, regularly, for, uh, anyways. I have slaves who do assist me a lot and gain the majority of farm work done. There is always something to do on my farm. I mean, I have an anchor of farmland. There's always work to do. When summer ended and fall enters, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm still the farmer now. I try my best to grow as many crops as possible just before the winter comes. So I have food for me and my family. Were there any special particular events that happened during fall that affected your crops in your life? Can you describe it? Hmm, any events now? Let me think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was the year 1821. I almost starved to death because a great tornado came and stored nearly two-thirds of my crops. It was a horrible year. A really, really horrible year. <laughs> are, you, are your slaves significant towards your farming? Significant? Definitely. Are you kidding? I think with such a large farm, well, that's such a large farm, excuse me, many working hands are significant. My slaves are very important to me and very important to my industry and they make me big money. <laughs>